Hello pre-calculus. We're down to the last set of problems for this uh, kind of lengthy first chapter. Um, it's all about inequalities. We'll go from the, the very bare minimum idea of how do you express things in terms of x versus intervals all the way up to how do you deal with kind of complex ones that have quadratic structure and rational function structure. You know, fractions with the tops and bottoms that potentially both have x's. So let's just get to the very first concept here of how do you express solutions in terms of intervals and how do you express solutions just in terms of x? So um, if you go back to your math one days, when you saw something like x is less than negative 2, you would normally express it on a number line as all the solutions that are not quite negative 2 but all the way up to like negative 2.0000001 things like that right so we put an open circle on this on this negative 2 and then we would either put an arrow above or just kind of fill in the number line like this yeah at a higher level math which you guys have probably seen we start, instead of doing open circles versus closed circles, if you guys remember, a closed circle would be something like this, and then you'd fill it in. We kind of replace that concept with parentheses for open circles and brackets for closed circles. So it's kind of like this graph would almost be represented as a parenthesis facing leftward, and then everything would be filled in that way. Now, they don't, they don't say you have to graph these. I'm just showing that as a visual representation right now. The interval notation would be you're starting from the left at an infinitely small value. All right? So it's something like we can't really put a quantity on that value, so we just have to say what trend of behavior. The trend of behavior is that it, quote, starts at negative infinity. But there really isn't an actual starting point. So you put a parenthesis to say, I'm not including this, this very vague infinite value. I'm just saying it just keeps going and going and going in that direction there. But it does stop at negative 2. We're not including it, but we know for sure it stops there. So that's what it means to express x is less than negative 2 in interval notation. On the next one, like I said, uh, the inequality with an equal to on it would create an, a closed circle, which is a bracket on your number line instead of a parenthesis. Um, there's a couple different ways to look at this. You could split this up and say it's 5 is greater than x and x is greater than or equal to negative 2. Those two statements are happening simultaneously. And then you could just rewrite this as x is smaller than 5 to just get some perspective on it. So x is bigger than or equal to negative 2. You could put a bracket on negative 2 because it's the leftmost. All the numbers bigger than or equal to negative 2. But then it's also all the numbers smaller than 5. So it's just going to be negative 2 to 5, not including the 5. And again, you didn't have to split this apart. You literally could have just thought of it as negative 2 is less than or equal to x, which is less than 5. And I think that's the way that most students can come up with this interval, is when they visualize it like this first. OK, so that's how you go from uh, a, a, a solution in terms of x to intervals. Now if you're starting with intervals and you're trying to go to a solution in terms of x backwards, uh, hopefully it's, it, you're seeing the connection of, hey, this looks a lot like that, which is this in terms of x. So what you can do is say, this is one of those connected statements that looks like that, that starts with negative 5 and ends with 4, the bracket represents an equal to, the parenthesis represents just a less than, no equal to, and then x 
as you can see, is in the middle. All right, so there's the basics of just expressing your final answers. Now, how do we just solve these things if we're given a statement where x is not really by itself? Well, the idea is generally do what you would do in an equation situation if it has simple structure. So I would say this is relatively simple structure. And we can do the addition or subtraction from both sides and multiplication and division from both sides to figure out the solution, just like we did with equations. So you can subtract 3x from both sides. And then subtract 5 from both sides. So x is isolated on one side, constants isolated on the other. You get negative 1x is less than negative 12. All right, this is the point where we divide both sides by a negative 1. Keep in mind that inequalities have a little bit of a wonky thing. 3 is less than 4. Here's just a random example. What if I divided both sides by a negative number kind of at a whim? So, hey, let's divide both, both sides by negative 1. Negative 3 is now no longer less than negative 4, but greater than when you look at like a number line. It's like, hey, negative 4 is left of negative 3, which means negative 3 being right to it is bigger than it. So. You know, you just got to switch it when you divide by negatives or multiply by negatives. So, it's x is greater than 12, and it said express... By the way, guys, I didn't go into great detail explaining this. Um, yeah. <laughs> Put this in interval notation. You'd say, okay, we start almost at 12. It seems like we're starting at 12.00000001. So it's a parenthesis on the 12 for the, for the greater than. And then we're going to infinity. There's no real end value, so you can't put a bracket on infinity. And that's our solution. All right, number 13 is a little more complicated. I got a couple different ways to do number 13. The first way is kind of an intuitive approach where you're like, all right, I've got a negative number on top. Yeah? So a negative divided by what would force us to be greater than zero? It has to be a negative divided by a negative. A negative divided by a negative must be greater than zero. Therefore, the bottom can't be positive. It has to be negative. The bottom, 4 minus 3x, the denominator, must be negative in order to make this a true statement. So you're essentially solving that inequality. You're solving the inequality where only a negative divided by a negative will make a positive in this case. So the bottom must be negative. So I said 4 minus 3x is less than 0. 4 minus 3x is negative. Yeah, and then you solve it. So, divided by a negative, flip that, x is greater than 1 and a third. Which would be parenthesis 1 and a third, or parenthesis 4 thirds, that's okay. You can make it, you can keep them as improper fractions to infinity. If that didn't quite make sense and you're like, that's maybe I'm not comfortable doing those little intuitive arguments. 
Here's a good standard approach. So here's alt number 13. When you see a fraction compared to zero with inequalities, um, there are certain critical numbers in which numbers that numbers for x that make the numerator zero or the denominator zero are kind of like those critical values at which stuff is happening. Okay, so here's what you can do: you can say find the critical numbers first. In this case, it's just the bottom equaling zero is a critical number. So you can solve, you can, you know, you can solve this equation by adding 3x and then dividing by 3. Right? Of course, it was, we know that was 4 thirds because we solved it already. So, so x equals 4 thirds is a critical number. Then what you do is you ask yourself, okay, if, if 4 thirds is my only critical number, that's the only place where things switch from maybe positive to negative if I were to graph this thing. So what you can do is you can, you can set up intervals. So once you find your critical numbers, you say set, set up intervals, and then you just, you just test them. So start at negative infinity, stop at 4 thirds. Because it's in the denominator, you can't really divide by 0. So whatever this is, it has to be a parenthesis. And then you go from 4 thirds to infinity. Those are sort of like, it's either negative infinity to 4 thirds or 4 thirds to, to infinity. It's one or the other. So now you test the intervals by picking a random number that must just be, you know, between negative infinity and four thirds. Zero is an easy one in this case. And over here, four thirds to infinity, we could pick something like two. And then you plug that test point into the left hand side of the equation. If it yields a positive number, you're greater than zero and it checks out. If you're less than zero, then it doesn't check out and that solution doesn't work. So try zero. Negative seven over four minus three times zero. Three times zero, zero. Four minus zero, four. Negative seven over four, that's a negative number. Because it's a negative number, it is not greater than zero, so this interval is not a viable option for the solution. But if you plug in 2, you get 3 times 2 is 6. 4 minus 6 is negative 2. Negative 7 over negative 2, positive. That is greater than 0. Therefore, this is the solution. Now I'll say this much, that is, that's a relatively complex procedure, the alternate number 13, but it's actually going to be the way in which we solve more complex rational functions as inequalities. Same thing with quadratics. So I'm just throwing this out here. You might want to study on this because some of the future examples almost require you to do that. This is great for this example though, okay? All right, um, I think that's a good place to stop for this video.